Welcome back, I'm Tad Ward. McGovern Auto Group was nice enough to invite me out to their Lowell store to drive this Ford Transit 250MR. It's the medium roof, and I'm gonna be honest, I love these things. <laughs> when I quit my job, my inner hipster, uh, I didn't do it, but my inner hipster told me, you should go buy yourself a van and travel the country, drive cars all over the place, and it would be cool to do it. And now that these sort of panel vans are way less sketchy looking than they used to be, like the Econolines, man. I don't know, man. There's something about a white panel Econoline that just screams, you should pull me over and inspect the rear. But these are awesome because, yeah, maybe, maybe you're not a hipster and you're going to go out uh, rock climbing and camping all over the country with your bed and your little kitchen and all that stuff. Those get pretty pricey. We can talk about that later. But... For a work truck, these are incredible and they're so easy to drive. We'll get to that part later. This one's outfitted with a bunch of shelves. So you can imagine this being like kind of a, a mini work truck. You've got all of your tools for your uh, service industry, industry stuff. Like if you were a plumber or a contractor, it doesn't get much better than this, especially because, I mean, I'm 5'9", maybe, oof. I can stand up in here. That was the hat, not me. <laughs> but it's incredible. You can get in these and actually use the space. And you can configure them in pretty much infinite ways. This is fantastic. And the sliding door is huge. This is a lot of space to be able to get things in and out of. That's something you forget about once in a while, unless you're somebody who uses them all the time. It's like, have you ever tried to move a couch into your apartment, second, third floor, no elevator? You start to appreciate the wide doorways. Around back, of course, we've got this monster glass, which is nice for visibility, but we also have these doors and you can set them so they don't go any further than this. That's nice because if the wind blows, you don't want it to take it into whatever's next to you or into a sidewalk and hit a person. You don't want that liability, but you can unlock them and they come back all the way to here. It's got its own little magnetic door stopper thing. So you don't have to worry about it slamming into the van. But how incredible is that? Because that means that the entire width of this is usable to move things in and out of. Unlike those Econoline vans back in the day with their 302s and their 351 V8s, which were fine. The 302 always felt a little underpowered. Now we've got less gas guzzling action up front. 275 horsepower out of this three and a half liter V6. This one's all wheel drive, so we should be able to be good in all seasons, all situations. And if you were going to be the hipster going out into the wilderness, uh, you know, I'd rather have the all wheel drive set up just to make sure I'm not stuck, especially if I'm by myself. So let's close it up and go for a drive. Inside these are fairly bare bones. There's not a whole lot to them, but we've got our nice new display, which I have not seen before. This scoots, man. I do not miss I do not miss the Econoline days. <laughs> so I'm not trying to come on too strong here. It's not an S-Class, right? But it's also, it doesn't drive like uh, what we would, you know, sometimes we insultingly say things drive like trucks. This doesn't drive like a truck. That, I don't know that that really works anymore. Most trucks don't even drive like trucks anymore. You get an F-150 or something and they, they're, pretty, they're pretty easy. This is the largest sun visor I've ever seen in my entire life. Are you kidding me? Oh, we've got some storage up top. Cool, so I can put more stuff up here. I can put my phone up there. Nice little grippy, grippy stuff up here. That's cool. I could actually put, I could use that. But if you're gonna spend hours in your van all the time, like you wanna be able to relax while you're driving. And right now I'm having a relaxed experience because one, I've got visibility, like crazy visibility because I've got glass everywhere. I can even see behind me because this is cut out and I've got glass behind me. That's fantastic. I've got the right seating position. I'm not low, but I'm not jacked up in the sky like I'm in some crazy Mack truck. I mean, some of these old, older uh, style vans and stuff, they always made you feel like you were driving something a little more unwieldy. More importantly though, is that I have handling characteristics that drive like a car. I could hand this to anybody. Whereas like an old Econoline like that, while they're fine to drive, they're, I don't know, man, they, 
they just don't have the steering input, the braking confidence, things like that. Whereas when I'm driving this, it's 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 very natural. I could hand this to anybody. I could give this to my mom, say, hey, run down to the store, park it, do the thing. It's not that bad, even though it's a large vehicle. And that's, I think, where engineering has really uh, changed the game with these types of vehicles is that They've made them feel smaller. They've made them feel like cars. Even something as simple as a lane change, right? When you have a panel van that has no windows in it, that's a tricky uh, tricky maneuver. And I don't wanna have to go through insurance because I keep turning into people. That's not a good day. Have you ever rented a U-Haul back in the day? I moved from Boston to South Carolina in 2011, and I drove a U-Haul from Boston to South Carolina. It was like 800 plus miles. It was not a fun experience. I would not recommend doing it. I was towing my 350Z on a trailer. It was awful. It was just a miserable experience. They don't drive like that anymore because you wouldn't have to drive that. When you get a box truck, look, this box truck up here, this is another transit. You can do crazy things with these. And now you've got the practicality of this box truck with the ease of a, of a transit van. I mean, seriously, the drivability of these are just incredible. Oh, we have different modes. All right, drive mode, normal, eco, slippery, that sounds fun, mud, ruts, and tow, haul. Okay, we're not towing or hauling, so we're gonna turn that off. But, I mean, like I said, you can tow with this. You, this is what you would do. You would, you like, for me, I would take this, turn it into my shop van if I had the money, if I had the money to do this. I would buy a race car that was not road legal, I would put it on a trailer and I would put all my gear in this thing. And then now I have the ultimate, okay, the ultimate traveling workstation for my race car. The steering wheel is funny. It honestly kind of feels small in my hands and it might be because I just got out of the Velociraptor 600, but that's a good thing. You know, the, the old days, and I know I keep comparing the old days, but the old days you had a big, a big, a big ridiculous steering wheel that, that had no feedback. The steering in this is, is, is really nice, very tactile. I know what's going on. I can place it where I want it to go. The fact that I'm on a slightly winding road in a transit van and I'm excited to take the next corner, that should tell you a lot. Uh, no, we're not doing that. That's a school. I don't think I really want to pull in and turn around at a school in a white panel van. I have limits. Though I had considered renting or buying a van like this when I first quit my job to do YouTube full time because the idea was, ooh, winter's coming. I'm not gonna have sports cars in New England. So what if I had a camper van that I could live out of and travel the country going to warmer climates, driving cars for YouTube, right? I mean, COVID-19 has really changed the game. I think we forget about this, but the fact is, at the beginning, nobody even wanted to stay in hotels. People were afraid to go anywhere. So the idea that you would have to, you know, you would drive your car somewhere and then, and then post up at a hotel with, a hundred other people in that hotel. Oh my God, no, absolutely not. I think we're figuring that out a little more now, but still, if I were actually making a career of that, I think I'd just want myself a van. Uh, and and you, can, you can go as crazy as you want. I mean, you can take a van and do a $50,000 build and, and, and you'll be fine. But there's people who make like $200,000 vans that are ultra luxurious. And this is somewhere, something that because you've got these all wheel drive systems and they're capable drivers, you know, you can go and, and, and bring them to remote locations all over the country, not get stuck. As long as you've got enough fuel in the thing, you can really explore places that no one else has been able to explore. No one else has really been able to sleep in. I mean, a Winnebago won't go in some of these places. But you load up your van, you load up your dog, you get your cool coffee kettle so you can Instagram all the things, and boom, you have yourself a new career and being able to comfortably navigate roads in a vehicle this size is really nice. This roof is under eight and a half feet. I think it's 8.4 feet. You can fact check me on that, but that means you can go anywhere. I mean, you probably fit in 
some parking garages, definitely going to be able to go under all the bridges. In Boston, we have a road called Storo Drive. We call it getting storoed when you crash your box truck into the bridge, which happens every year when the college students come with their parents to move in and out of their dorms. And even though there are signs everywhere that say height limits and please do not drive trucks on this road, they, they still do. So you won't get storoed in this. It should also tell you something that a lot of delivery services are moving to these types of, of vehicles. That means that the longevity is there, right? I mean, limos always used like Fords and Lincolns because they knew they could get the most miles out of those gearboxes and those engines with minimal maintenance. It's all about business case, right? I mean, yeah, sure, it might be more luxurious to use an S-Class Mercedes, but the overhead to run a fleet of limousines with S-Classes is way higher than if you were doing it with like a Lincoln Town Car. So I think when you see these out in the wild as like Amazon delivery trucks and that kind of thing, that should tell you that they are going to last hundreds of thousands of miles with stop and go abuse. Which is why Grumman mail trucks are also on my list of must drive vehicles. I want to review a Grumman. So that's a transit van. I think they look a lot less sketchy than the panel vans of yore. Still, don't get into a stranger's van offering you puppies and candy. Uh, it doesn't matter that they look less sketchy. We still don't want to harm anybody. We'll let this nice gentleman go if he would like to cross the street with his adorable kid and that wicked cool car. Yes, get more cool car stuff for your kids. I like that. Thank you to McGovern Ford for letting me drive this, even though you were probably wondering why is he choosing the transit van over the Ford Mustang? Well, you know what? Transit vans are weird. Not many people have reviews on these. <laughs> Everybody has a Mustang review. Thank you so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive, and I'll see you in the next one. Oddly enough, we actually had a Ford Econoline E150 and it was a conversion van. It was one of those Mark III conversion vans. Look at that, I can see, I can see. How wonderful is this? I can actually tell that I'm not gonna get in a huge accident right now. Well, we had a 302 and it was vastly underpowered. I remember that thing always gear hunting. It, it had a hard time climbing hills on the highway. It'd have to downshift. That wasn't fun. Uh, it was definitely one of those like, 90s styles vans where you had the, the fold down bed in the back, the TV, the tube television with the VCR in the back with the two captain's chairs. We, we went on road trips. We go to Washington, D.C. We do family vacations in it. It was fine. But I don't think my dad ever looked forward to driving it. I think every time they got in it, they were like, yikes, this thing is a boat. It's heavy. It doesn't break well. It doesn't handle well. And today, if you were to do like the conversion van thing, if that became a fad again, like family conversion vans, these would be so much better. Massachusetts is incredible. People just like pull out into the road as if they're like, oh yeah, that's fine. Watch, she won't wave. She's not gonna wave. Nothing, no wave. You're welcome for not T-boning you.